Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 most underrated fragrances in my collection, so stay tuned for that. If you like top 10 list fragrance reviews, clone comparisons, and first impressions, hit that subscribe button for more great content. So I saw this video on Northwest Sense, uh, or I saw this idea on his channel, it's a tag video, I don't remember who started it. And I don't even remember who he tagged, but I did decide to steal the idea. So credit for him and credit to the originator um, of this series. But I thought it would be good to talk about 10 fragrances that I really enjoy and I have in my collection that, you know, a lot of people don't talk about or maybe don't talk about so much anymore. So I'm going to jump right into it. First one, perhaps no surprise, Allure Homme um Sport Cologne. I love this one. I keep talking about this one. To me, it's actually probably my favorite summer fragrance right now, partially because it is new to me. Has pretty good performance, six hour mark or so. And this is just a really, really nice, fresh, uplifting, orange, lemon, neroli fragrance. That's the main thing I get from this. So it is in many ways a citrus bomb if you wanna think about it. But just very pleasing, very uplifting, very easy to wear, very fun, uh, very casual fragrance. It does have a lot of quality to it. You know, everything smells very realistic, very nice lemon scent, very nice orange, very nice neroli feel to it. So you probably could wear this to a more formal occasion without any problems, especially if it's in a very hot situation. This would work really, really well, but really enjoy this one. That is my number 10 spot. Number nine, Bulgari Wood Neroli. Some people love it, some people hate it. But I think if you like those Neroli Portofino fragrances, it was 47, 11 type fragrances, and you want something maybe cheaper or that performs better, this is a really good option. I do get between that six to eight hour mark, which is actually really, really nice, again, for the type of fragrance that it is. Very nice, bright, um, well, not overly bright, but very in your face, prickly Neroli feel in the opening. And it does have a semi kind of aquatic feel to it that dries down into a nice woody base. As I've said every time, the one thing about this fragrance, sometimes I find, I believe it's cedar in the dry down, the cedar does feel a little generic at times, but it is, you know, overall a nice uh, woody dry down and the price point's very good. I got this at $40, you might be able to find it even cheaper now, I don't know, but it's a really, really good one. Next one, one I almost never hear anyone talk about, and that is none other than Windwood from Mansara. I mean, this is just such a nice violet fragrance. It doesn't have that kind of gasoline smell. It rather has a very fresh, breezy kind of feel to it. A little bit of greenness in there. It does have a slightly woody dry down, but it is really, really breezy violet. So again, if you don't like violet, you're definitely not gonna like this, but it is, it is a really, really good fresh fragrance performance beast mode, as most Manceras are. So you don't need to go too heavy with this one to really get uh, to get the performance out of it works really really well pretty much any time next one is a Killian fragrance so there are actually a lot of Killian fragrances that don't get talked about this is one that I feel like doesn't get talked about a lot either to me this is Alberto Marias Morialis's probably said that totally wrong his best creation his most luxurious and classy creation even though he has heavy hitters like Aqua de Joe um, it's Musk Oud by Killian and this is this luxurious, super, super luxurious, musky, little bit of rose in it. Does definitely have a little bit of a sharp rose in the opening. A little bit of booziness that gives it an almost uh, liquidy feel to it. And mostly, again, musky with uh, some rose and booziness. Now, this one does have the word oud in the name. I don't really get much woodiness at all. And in fact, a little bit more of wood in the base would be maybe the only thing I would change about this fragrance. But the, I'd have to smell the entire composition with a woodier base to really know if it works, but don't expect oud, that's all I'm trying to say. If you're trying to get something with a really nice oud vibe, this is definitely not it. If you want a heavy musky fragrance and you want something luxurious, something with a hint of rose, or you, d you do like rose, this would be a good one to check out. That booziness adds a nice character to it, I feel, and it doesn't come off any way as being overly alcoholic or you won't smell like a drunk like some fragrances from Killian um, but really really good one beast mode performance like literally crazy performance on that one that is nuclear lasts forever as well like a 12-hour fragrance very very good as well 
Another one, I heard this originally from Steven from Red Adolescence. Is a really good one. Leather fragrance, very nice, sweet saddle. Luxurious leather with butterscotch. I mean, that's the easiest way to put this fragrance. Luxurious leather and butterscotch. Really, really nice, uh, different kind of take on that sweet, leathery fragrance genre that a lot of people really love. And I think probably Tuscan leather popularized and it does that sort of sweet leather without smelling anything like Tuscan leather, which is nice because a lot of people do that raspberry leather combo. Next one, probably no surprise because if you listen to me or watch my channel, it's not underrated at all. I talk about it a lot. And that is of course Galloway Parfums de Marly. One of the most versatile fragrances that they own. I think Percival is probably the most versatile fragrance from Parfums de Marly, but this is a really nice, easy to wear, musky fragrance, a little bit of pepper. Um, and it does have a nice citrusy vibe in the opening. Somewhere in the opening too, it does have this sort of fresh, clean water feel, dries down into a peppery musk, lasts a very long time. Um, and again, it's just really easy to wear, nice fragrance, casual, but could be worn in the office as well, because again, easy to wear, easy to like. Now, I believe we're on the top four. That would have been the top fifth spot. Four left to go. One from Navitus. Now, this is my favorite from Navitus. I know Navitus has had mixed reviews all around. A lot of people have said good things, bad things. And a lot of people have called it a clone house, whatever. I know there are certainly some fragrances that do smell like other ones. This one, I haven't found anything that it smells like. It has a huge blast of licorice in the opening. So, uh, or it's anise, I believe. And it does smell a lot like black licorice. Very, very in your face. But it has this very mysterious vibe to it that uh, definitely that black licorice vibe can give it. it has a really nice kind of fluffy, cocoa-y, marshmallow-y um, feel in the dry down with that really thick tobacco uh, that this fragrance has throughout the life of the fragrance. Very nice, very dark, interesting, uh, high quality fragrance. And uh, you know, of course, Big Beard Business should be proud of being the uh, creative director behind this fragrance. And I think MFK was one of the perfumers, I forget who the other one was, who did that fragrance. Very, very nicely done. Beautiful fragrance, and if you do get a chance to check that one out and you like tobacco, that's a really nice one to check out. Top three, and to me this is the number one apple pie fragrance, Rosé All Day. A lot of people don't talk about this one that much. I know it has certainly gotten some talk, and it is a little bit older, but there's a lot of older fragrances, fragrances that still get talked about a lot. If you like gourmand fragrances, this is thick, rich, sweet, syrupy apple pie absolutely gorgeous. I don't really get much of the rose. Um, does have a really nice plum note in the opening. A little bit of patchouli starts to come out in the dry down and mid. So this is not just going to be apple pie um, for the entire life of this fragrance. There is, you know, a stainless steel vibe. I don't get too much of that. Some people find that they get it a lot. You know, it kind of simulates the apple pie in the actual pan. But absolutely gorgeous fragrance. And if you like something that smells like an apple pie to me this is the best of the best uh absolutely number one beats Ouajan, beats angel share beats um ombre narguil even though i think that's one of the first ones to really do it absolutely amazing well done fragrance top two sweetly known by kerosene now a lot of kerosene fragrances don't get talk um i picked this one partially because I even don't talk about it that much. I did review this one, um, and I, of course, gave it a positive review. That's why I'm saying it's underrated. But the House of Kerosene in general, I think, is underrated. Good price value proposition, 100 mil for around $140, which I think is really, really nice. And this one is a confectionery dream in many ways. It does have this really nice um, kind of bakery-esque kind of feel with cardamom in the opening. And that opening lasts for a very, very long time. This is an extremely long lasting fragrance, 12 plus hours easily. Dries down into this nice, fluffy, marshmallowy kind of a vibe, which is very, very nice, very, very seductive. Some people did mention that there is a, they felt like uh, by the fireplace with this fragrance. And I do get a little bit of that in the dry down. So I, it kind of has that marshmallowy feel to it, although I wouldn't say this smells like by the fireplace, but there are elements of it that I think you could compare it to that fragrance. Uh, but all in all, it's a very unique fragrance. 
it is really really well done and if you like gourmand fragrances this one as well as unknown pleasures from the house or um, follow which does get quite a bit of talk also very very amazing man can't wait until weather cools down this is definitely not a hot weather fragrance by any means now the number one one that i personally love and another killian and you know it's not super underrated but in some sense it is this is the one that you know people typically talk about all apple brandy uh, a lot of times with their really boozy fragrances but this one is single malt and to me single malt is the better of the two um, i really really do love this one it's this very boozy very enjoyable um kind of rye whiskey feel i know it is supposed to be single malt as in um you know scotch whiskey but i do get more of a rye whiskey feel with this one and it does have a little bit of a woodiness a little bit of a smoke feel which gives you the feeling of that cask also has a very very nice plum note so especially if you do like plum and you want a boozy fragrance check this one out because it is a, it opens up with a very nice boozy plum uh, feel to it dries down a little bit woodier this is one that has a gentlemanly projection i like to say so it's not a beast mode fragrance it's not a skin scent but it is one that if someone's sitting near you they're definitely going to smell it and it is one that i find is not it's not overly invasive of course there's times when you want to wear these beast mode fragrances but this fragrance doesn't force itself on other people which is really nice um, because there's definitely a time and a place for beast mode fragrances definitely a time and a place for fragrances that are a little bit more as i like to say gentlemanly um uh, but that being said you know i do really like this one one of my favorite killians um maybe even my favorite killian depending on the mood but i really really do enjoy that one uh but that's it that's the top 10 most underrated fragrances in my collection what is the most underrated fragrance in your collection that you think people should be talking about more or maybe you're just happy that it's a bit of a hidden gem and you have it and other people don't leave a comment down below let me know and as always don't forget to like and subscribe See you guys in the next video.